Currently, 747,000 Canadians have some type of cognitive impairment, including dementia, and this number is expected to double to 1.4 million by 2031. Furthermore, 20% of Canadian seniors are living with a mental illness, with anxiety and depression frequently coexisting among older adults, more often being associated with dementia. Pain tends to be underreported and not treated, resulting in agitation and aggression, while mood disorders often go untreated because older adults may not recognize them or they may not report them due to associated social stigma. Work Package 6 is developing software applications for screening, assessment, and interventions to enhance mental health and cognitive function, and tools that can automatically detect behaviors that lead to poor cognitive and mental health. Our team is led by Drs. Liu and Strulia with the Occupational Therapy and Computing Science Departments at the University of Alberta and includes researchers across Canada from the University of Toronto, the University of Regina, the University of Alberta, Simon Fraser University, University of Manitoba, the Bruyer Research Institute, and Carleton University. Our work package is characterized by common methodology. We use a variety of sensing techniques to monitor and record data about behaviors of interest, and we analyze the recorded data to extract evidence for and measures of cognitive and mental conditions. More specifically, we are working on serious games implemented on mobile apps or arcade-style appliances to assess and support cognitive function on smart homes embedded with ambient sensors and cameras and informed by wearables to recognize people's activities, on vision-based methods for recognizing pain in sensors with dementia, on audio-based analyses of senior stories for evidence of Alzheimer's disease, on big data analysis to identify the lifestyle factors most strongly associated with good health in older adults, on brain fitness APP, for the aging population that may help to maintain brain health and detect the onset of cognitive decline, and on validating the use of low-cost, rapid-output electrocephalography platform for the diagnosis and assessment of cognitive impairment. In the next set of slides, we will discuss each of our projects in more detail. There are more than 165,000 mobile health apps available to North American consumers on iTunes and Google Play. The number of health-related apps designed for the general public has doubled in the past two years. Despite the fast growth in the number of mobile health apps, there are no scales available to rate the quality of these apps for older adults who may experience cognitive and sensory changes. This makes it challenging for both patients and care providers to identify appropriate apps to use or to recommend to seniors. Our objective is to develop a rating scale that can help users and clinicians rate the quality of mobile health apps. We envision that the proposed rating scale will impact current practice in the following ways. One, it will help inform users who make decisions when choosing an app. Two, it will inform health practitioners who make recommendations of apps to their clients. And three, it will guide app developers to assess the quality of their products in order to make them more usable, especially in older adults. Statistics Canada reported the number of missing adults who have gone missing as a result of wandering have increased from 2010 to 2015, raising concern as to how it can be managed. While a single definition of dementia-related wandering has been proposed, it does not acknowledge the range of risk the term represents. This project will focus on developing a conceptual model that guides choice of interventions to manage wandering, and to examine wandering behavior in persons with dementia from a perspective of risk rather than disease progression. The research design will consist of both exploratory and explanatory phases. The exploratory phase will combine an extensive literature search with focus groups of formal and informal carers of persons with dementia who wander to a identify all possible behaviors and clinical indicators that would determine whether a person was at a particular level on the wandering risk continuum, and b, to identify all possible wander management strategies, including high and low-tech assistive technologies. 
the explanatory phase will incorporate the results of the previous phase into a conceptual framework that will pair each level of risk of wandering to its corresponding strategy or strategies. This framework will then be verified and validated by stakeholders to examine its potential of being implemented for use within the community. Digital storytelling is a form of narrative that creates short films using media technology, including still photos, sound, music, and videos. Research suggests that the benefits of storytelling for persons with dementia include enhanced relationships and communication. The purpose of this research is to explore and understand digital storytelling as perceived and experienced by the storytellers themselves. Using a multi-site case study design, the study takes place in Edmonton, Vancouver, and Toronto. Participants with dementia attend eight workshop sessions, where they create digital stories with the support of researchers and care partners. Participants then discuss the workshop experience using technology. Last, the participants have the opportunity to share their digital stories with their loved ones and the audience they choose. Data is being collected through observational field notes, audio recorded workshop sessions and interviews. The recording will be transcribed and analyzed using NVivo 10 software and a thematic analysis protocol. In Edmonton, preliminary data indicate that participants are engaged and enjoy the process of sharing and creating digital stories. The care partners were also supportive and encouraging throughout the sessions. The first four participants described the process as a meaningful experience. This workshop can offer those with dementia and their care partners a tool for clients to reminisce or create a legacy for their loved ones. Health service providers who are new to dementia clients may view the digital stories to gain an appreciation of a client's personhood. The team in the Interactive Media Lab at the University of Toronto is working on the problem of how to increase activity and maintain functioning in people with dementia. Typically, there may be around 10 people with dementia for every one caregiver available to deliver programming in long-term care. However, people with dementia require personalized programming that is customized to their abilities and needs, but this is not possible when caregivers need to deal with the groups of people and can only provide programming for a small portion of the day. We are developing the Centivisor system to reward people with dementia in long-term care for targeted behaviors. Our goal is to increase the frequency and effectiveness of behavior, leading to more preservation of physical and cognitive function. Shown here is the early Centivisor prototype that rewards people with nickels based on game performance. The game here is the cognitive game that tests how well people can exert cognitive control of their thinking. This whack-a-mole game has been validated as a measure of cognitive status in clinical trials and requires the person to hit moles as rapidly as possible after they pop out of holes, but without hitting non-mole distractor items. In addition to the whack-a-mole game for measuring cognitive status, a number of other Centivisor components have been developed that are not shown here. These other components include arm strengthening lever that provide physical exercise, a painting game that encourages creativity and visual appreciation, and a web-based interface that allows family and staff to track the progress of different residents. The Interactive Media Lab is also working with industrial partner Ambient Activities to help evaluate their products. Here, we see a second generation Ambient Activity prototype in use. The activities provided are based on Montessori principles. Thus, ambient activities are designed to promote self-confidence and independence, and they focus on the person's functional capacity and interests. The technology has also been designed to engage people with late-stage dementia, using personally meaningful content. The overall goal is to reduce the frequency and severity of responsive behaviors. These behaviors may occur due to unmet needs, and may sometimes be due to the presence or risk of delirium. Delirium is a form of brain failure that is known to occur fairly frequently in people with dementia in long-term care. We are currently carrying out an evaluation of ambient activities that will take several months to complete. Outcomes being evaluated include self-report measures of well-being filled out with respect to staff and the people with dementia, measures of activity, and measures of the amounts of use of antipsychotic medications. We are beginning the trial in three long-term care homes in Ontario this fall, with three more to be added in the upcoming months. 
Participation in exercise programs can enhance the physical and mental health of healthy older adults, including persons with dementia. However, programs tailored for dementia clients are scarce, and barriers such as transportation and accessibility further limit their participation. The purpose of this project is to evaluate the usability of a home connect-based system and to determine its effect on perceived physical and mental health of dementia clients. Using a serious games methodology, K-Rehab, our home connect-based system, is developed to guide clients through postures and movements, recognize features of their movement, and provide different types of constructive feedback and motivating rewards when movements are performed well. The study will consist of three phases. One, piloting usability phase. Two, piloting usability from a distance phase. And three, effectiveness phase. In each session throughout all three phases, participants will perform six exercises provided by K-Rehab. During the first two phases, the participating clients will participate in semi-structured interviews to evaluate the usability of K-Rehab, which will be used to improve its functionalities and interface. For the third phase, lasting four to six weeks, participants will be assigned to one of two conditions to determine the effectiveness of K-Rehab in comparison to standard exercise classes. The Unicog platform is designed with the objective of providing an integrated repository for cognitive assessment data. On one hand, we are interested in developing software versions of valid pen and paper instruments for cognitive assessment, like the clock drawing test or the star cancellation test, for example. Our objective is to simplify and systematize the use of these instruments, eliminating the noise that manual scoring inevitably introduces. On the other, we are redeveloping familiar games, like Whack-A-Mole or Word Search or Bejeweled, in a way that each game presents game playing levels of systematically increasing difficulty that should challenge different aspects of the user's cognition. In this activity, our objective is to provide a host of fun or engaging games that can, at the same time, serve as cognitive training interventions. Unicog provides the back end for both these types of applications to support studies evaluating the effectiveness of different interventions. In addition, it also provides support for the collection of physiological signals during gameplay and analytics services that take into consideration these multidimensional data services. This comprehensive and extendable toolkit and data collection platform enable researchers, caregivers, and individuals to gain insights about the different aspects of the visual motor and cognitive conditions of patients and their evolution while undergoing different interventions. Recognition of the movements and activities of the occupants of home is a basic functionality, underlying a variety of smart home services and assisted living services for seniors and people with disabilities. In our work on the Smart Condo Project, we have, for a long time, been interested in inexpensive, non-intrusive, easy-to-deploy methods for observing and analyzing the activities of people at home. Our aim is to use these observations for recognizing interesting patterns and events so that we may develop personalized supports for seniors, people with chronic conditions, and people experiencing mild to moderate cognitive decline. This project is motivated by two methodological assumptions. First, we believe that accurate information about a person's daily living activities can provide rich evidence on the person's abilities and functions. In particular, significant exceptions and changes in one's daily living routines may alert caregivers of potentially risky events, or even the need for increasing long-term support. Second, we believe that such information can be obtained by unobtrusive ambient sensors deployed inside users' homes, including infrared motion sensors and now BLE or Bluetooth low-energy beacons. The design of this new release of the Smart Condo platform includes a set of very small and inexpensive sensors attached to different objects in the house and a service running in the background of the occupant's smartphones. The smartphone is used to collect and report signal strength measurement from nearby BLE beacons. At the same time, non-BLE sensor data triggered as the inhabitants move around are also collected to a back end of a server. These two types of data sources are used to infer each person's locations, which are provided to the smartphones of the users, as well as streamed to the cloud-based smart condo server. The server generates textual reports and spatial visualizations for the movements and infrared activities for every occupant in any time interval, and warnings for special incidents which can be accessible by the person's doctor 
or caregiver or anyone of his or her choice. Depression is common among seniors. Late-life depression affects about 6 million Americans age 65 and older. A common pattern associated with depression is when a person avoids social contact. Depressed individuals tend to skip activities they normally enjoy and isolate themselves from the world. In this project, one, we use technology to observe a person's social activities, and two, we mine the observation data to identify social withdrawal patterns that may correlate with early signs of depression. The combination of the user's movements, as observed by smartphone's GPS, and her or his communication with others, as observed through call and chat phone logs, should provide a rich support of one's social activities outside and inside one's home. By correlating the patterns mined from this record with users' self-reported mood, we will validate this tool as a means for recognizing early signs of depression and, more generally, mood changes. In principle, although our focus is on older adults, this technology can be used by people of all ages, prone to mood changes and psychiatric disorders. Development of novel software for the evaluation of player task engagement and arousal using electroencephalography and electrooculography wearable devices. Physiological sensor monitoring is done using wearable devices available in the current market. These devices are versatile, affordable, wireless, and can be customized with software for different applications. Sensor monitoring is already in use today for diagnostics and monitoring. In this project, we are interested in capturing and processing brain signals related to cognitive abilities and emotions, while older adults, both healthy and with cognitive ability engagement and emotion impairments, play serious games. There is currently a need for software that can assess the effectiveness of such games. The objective of this project is to create a software that assesses a user's cognitive and emotional processing abilities in real time. The wearable devices used, the GINS glasses, an emotive EPOC headset, collect electrooculography EOG, and electroencephalography EEG, respectively. The software will enable the processing of the raw data into patient information, like coordinated task engagement data with arousal valence, or engagement and emotional response data. The analyses of these results will enable the healthcare professional to identify whether or not a patient's response is as expected, i.e. arousal with a win. These results can also be used to monitor patients' improvement over time. Python programming language will be used in this project as developing tool. Pre-processing filters are applied, then principal component analyses, PCA, is performed. Frequency band filtering is done to calculate alpha, beta, and theta bands. Following that, power spectrum of the bands will be extracted, which can then be used to output valence arousal and engagement of the user. As a case study, the whack-a-mole game will be used. It is a high-intensity game with three possible outputs. Hit a mole, so win. Miss identify target, fail. Or miss all targets, another fail. The proposed software may be used by a health professional to assess a patient's engagement with and emotional response to these events. Moving forward, this software will be used in order to test usefulness of other games for rehabilitation intervention with people who have cognitive impairment. Many people who have severe mental illnesses, including those with bipolar disorder, are living into older adulthood. Although progress has been made in the treatment of bipolar disorder, it can have significant impacts on older adults' quality of life and well-being. The purpose of the present study is to explore the patterns of in-home movements and thus daily activity to understand whether these may relate to episodes of hypo or mania and depression among older adults with bipolar disorder. In collaboration with our research partners based at Simon Fraser University, we will recruit 20 participants of a previous study focused on outdoor movement patterns among older adults with bipolar disorder. We will install 18 to 22 small motion sensors that resemble sensors and security systems in various rooms in people's homes. These motion sensors will be connected to small data collector computers. The collectors will send the data wirelessly to a specialized computer that will combine all signals created by motion sensors. These motion sensors will give us information about participants' movements 
in their homes over a period of three months. Participants will also record their daily activities in a structured diary. We will then analyze location, time, and frequency of their movements in order to explore the presence of patterns. Understanding person-specific movements that relate to these episodes may alert those with bipolar disorder as well as their caregivers and may help them manage their conditions. This is particularly important given that people with bipolar disorder often lack insight regarding their symptoms. Human action recognition is a very active area in computer vision research. In our project, we have developed a keyframe-based methodology which is computationally efficient and has with low storage requirements. Our method uses only a small number of keyframes from a large set of frames in a video sequence. Instead of using key poses or human pose tracking, the proposed method directly finds the keyframes using low-level cohog descriptors of each frame in a video. Only the keyframes are used later in the process to calculate the similarity matrix and the co-key matrix to represent a specific action video sequence. We have evaluated our method against the benchmark UT interaction datasets. The experimental results demonstrate promising performance in terms of its average action recognition accuracy. The results are comparable to, and in some cases, better than the state-of-the-art methods. In the future, we plan to extend the proposed method to address issues such as multi-view action recognition and activity recognition. Patients with severe dementia who live in long-term care facilities often suffer from unnecessary pain. This pain tends to be undertreated, in part because the cognitive and linguistic impairments that accompany dementia interfere with the ability to effectively communicate the subjective state of pain. In other words, people have pain, but they cannot tell us that they are in pain. Pain in this population can be assessed effectively through the monitoring of specific pain behaviors that tend to accompany pain, for example, certain facial expressions. There are methods that allow us to do that, but unfortunately long-term care facilities most often do not have the resources that are necessary to sufficiently frequent assessment of pain, and they do not have the resources that are necessary for the ongoing monitoring of pain behaviors in the residents. The technology that we are hoping to develop is going to be based on a computer vision system that will be identifying these behaviors. Staff will be alerted when the occurrence of these behaviors cross a certain threshold. This would allow staff to assess the patient when it is necessary and to intervene as needed. We are hoping that this system will result in improved quality of life for the residents, better care provided by the staff, and cost savings through the earlier identification of pain-related conditions. A computer algorithm that we are developing to identify these pain behaviors computer vision is based on the clinical data that we have collected. The clinical data consists of video recordings of patients displaying pain behaviors. Through careful coding of these videos, we will train the algorithm to automatically detect the occurrence of these behaviors. When the system is implemented, no video recording will be necessary. There will be no privacy concern because the system will only be recording occurrence of pain behaviors and not actual video footage. Our solution is based on proven vision technology to automatically detect faces in an image or in a live stream, and also to automatically analyze facial expressions by tracking and processing movements in the face. The challenge is that existing algorithms are developed using examples from young and healthy faces so naturally. They work very well in that population, but have underwhelming performance when tested in faces of older adults and older adults with dementia. We are using video and image data collected from older adults with dementia to develop our computer vision algorithms and to train our machine learning algorithms so that performance in this population is good. Winterlight Labs has developed a tablet-based speech assessment technology that detects and monitors cognitive impairment. The software analyzes short samples of a person's speech which is recorded as they describe a picture on a screen. It extracts hundreds of variables from the speech samples, producing results in less than 10 minutes. Our technology can reliably identify Alzheimer's disease, aphasia, and Parkinson's disease with 82 
to 100% accuracy. Long-term care providers and their clients will benefit from this technology. Regular use by assisted living providers can reassure families that their elderly relatives are still able to live independently. In residential care, our tool can help determine when to transition to a higher level of care. Family members receive quantifiable updates and providers can plan ahead. Through a Catalyst grant and now a SIP grant, Winterlight Labs and Rivera Living have partnered to refine the use case scenario of the app, develop a minimally viable product, validate scientific assumptions with regards to longitudinal analysis, and have deepened the relationship going forward. Being involved with AgeWell has also given Winterlight the ability to develop its product within the pharmaceutical industry and is currently working with three of the top pharmaceutical companies on feasibility studies. These hundreds of features can be grouped into high-level factors or even be used to predict scores on clinically validated tests, like the mini mental state exam, using modern machine learning. We have developed an intuitive interface, shown here, which can be used to report results to speech-language pathologists and clinicians. Standard assessments can typically be done no more frequently than every six months. However, by repeating this task every few weeks or as often as needed, longitudinal assessments can capture a person's natural variation over time, giving a more accurate picture of their mental health. In fact, we've recently found evidence of cognitive decline in the actor Gene Wilder, who died of Alzheimer's by using Winterlight's technology on his speech going back several decades. This is in contrast with actor Paul Newman, who showed no such decline across various linguistic measures. As we continue to collect more data and establish links in several sectors, we will be proceeding to raise a Series A round of funding later this year. We are engaging partners in a long-term care, other healthcare delivery, and pharmaceutical companies, thanks to the support of AgeWell. The number of older adults, age 65 plus, is increasing rapidly in Canada. In order to preserve health and minimize strain on limited healthcare resources, it is important to mobilize knowledge and effectively allocate resources to allow older adults to proactively maintain their own health. A key limitation to this is that older adults often do not know what type of activities can best support their health nor the amount of time they should engage in them. In order to reduce these barriers, we propose a big data analysis to identify the lifestyle factors most strongly associated with good health. These factors will be simplified and combined into a single aging health score, or AHS, that older adults can use to understand and improve their own health. This AHS will be developed in close partnership with the YMCA of Greater Vancouver to ensure that it is both ecologically valid and easily measured from end users. We will then work with the local YMCA to identify ways to improve the AHS and its older adult members. To do this, we will use data and analytics to identify ways in which the YMCA can effectively deliver impactful programs and services that are targeted to its members. The successful completion of this project will allow for larger adoption by the YMCA at the provincial and national levels, and will provide researchers with a flexible analysis pipeline that can be used to make informed, data-driven decisions about healthcare delivery for older adults. Memory and cognitive declines are associated with normal brain aging, but are also precursors to dementia. In particular, the so-called pandemic of the century, Alzheimer's disease. While currently there is no cure or vaccine against dementia, there are hopes to delay the onset of the disease by living a brain-healthy lifestyle. The proposed research offers a novel approach to prevent dementia and age-related cognitive disorders. We aim to create a brain fitness app for the aging population. The app is based on the premise of brain plasticity and targets the brain functions that are declining with normal aging and dementia. In a pilot study, we showed very positive effects of our custom-designed brain exercises 
to strengthen left-right side brain connectivity in older adults when used regularly. Leveraging our previous design, we propose to develop an end-user product with additional features and enhanced user interface and user experience that will allow it to be used for neurocognitive rehabilitation by an individual without supervision. The proposed app will be tested on a large population with statistical rigor. We will analyze the log performance of the participants and assess their cognitive state with an independent test compared to a matched control group before and after the trial. The app will be commercialized by our industrial partner to reach older adults nationally and internationally. We anticipate the frequent use of the proposed app will help to maintain a healthy brain as well as detecting the onset of a cognitive decline in aging population. In addition, its frequent use will slow and even reverse the progression of the cognitive decline in individuals with mild cognitive impairment or dementia. The app will have many different levels of difficulty so that it can be applied to a wide age range and condition. According to the Alzheimer's Association, about 600,000 Canadians have some form of dementia, costing more than $10.4 billion annually. In 15 years, this number will climb to 937,000. Early diagnosis and ongoing validation of treatments with respect to cognitive impairment is critical to promote healthy aging amongst this population. Thus, there is increasing demand for rapid and user-friendly technologies to identify early decline in brain function and monitor potential treatment efficiency. Yet, there are currently no cost-effective ways to monitor the physiological impacts of treatments for cognitive decline. Research suggests that evoked potentials using electroencephalography, known as EEG, may provide such measure. However, current state-of-the-art requires numerous leads and extensive clinical training. Standard EEG testing takes approximately one hour, 25 minutes for the EEG cap setup, and 10 minutes per paradigms, which can be put a strain on the cognitively impaired that have trouble sitting still for such a long period of time. Alternatively, NeuroCatch allows for brain vital signal translation in about five minutes. The NeuroCatch platform is a consumer-friendly brain monitoring tool developed by Dr. Ryan Darcy's group, Health Tech Connect, located in Surrey, BC. It allows clinicians to quickly monitor and report on brain activity. The platform's customized software translates established EEG brain waves from a reduced number of electrodes, including FZ, CZ, and PZ, into a clinically accessible and understandable framework, providing reliable insight into brain health. To date, the product has been successfully shown to measure hearing sensation, attention and language processing in individuals with moderate to severe brain injuries, including concussion. Its special features are the simplified processes, with reduced number of EEG electrodes and three short paradigms, allowing the assessment to be completed in a few short minutes. The SIP-funded project will verify the use of NeuroCatch platform to assess functional brain status in older adults with mild cognitive impairment, establishing a new product vertical and offering a new tool to support healthy aging. Dr. Frank Knopfel is a physician at the Bruyere Memory Met program and together with Dr. Rafik Gubren and others have previously identified changes in EEG signals associated with mild cognitive impairment. The funds received will allow targeted field testing at the Ottawa Memory Program, will support algorithm improvement as required, and support the delivery of a final validated product prototype. The ultimate outcome will be the introduction of a new low-cost and user-friendly point-of-care tool to support brain health assessment and potentially guide dementia treatment. You can find more information about our team and activities on our website or by contacting us at wp6 at ssrg.cs.ualberta.ca.